Hello, I'm Jenna Taylor, and this is You Need a Miracle. You know, this is a time when we get to tell all those extraordinary stories of what God's done on the earth today, in today's time, um, where we have seen the miracles that Jesus walked in when he was on the earth. And uh, they sort of develop a pattern as we go along. And uh, this particular pattern today is about transformation. Now, we all know the story about when Jesus actually went up to the mountain and uh, with some of his disciples and in on top of that mountain, in the presence of these disciples, he was transformed. It said his raiment was radiant and that he was radiant and just an incredible sight of this radiance that happens. He was actually visiting with some saints from long ago to, I don't know, hatch the plan, I'm not sure, but I know that he was transformed physically uh, in front of their very eyes. And um, when he came down, uh, he'd been in this elevated place above the chatter of the demonic and all that goes on down on the earth. And when he came down, he found that his other disciples were arguing with the Pharisees about healing. Now there was a gentleman there, a father, just panicked over his son, just wanted healing. The disciples couldn't seem to get him healed. What's the deal? The scribes and Pharisees are arguing, um, probably a theological discussion about healing. Um, this is just a, a, a point that needs to be made. Theological discussions never got anybody healed. It never got anybody saved. Why? Because transformation's in the heart. Transformation happens here, not here. And so when Jesus came down, of course, he said, what are y'all talking about? Uh, well, we couldn't get this uh, demon out of this poor boy. And of course, Jesus, because he's so wise, said to the father, do you want your boy to be healed? And he said, well, they can't get it done. You know, it just won't work. It doesn't, won't happen. It can't get it done. And in a moment, Jesus transformed everything. And in a moment, a father had his son back. And that son was transformed. That's what the heart does. It transforms people. I want to tell you a great story about a transformation. Oh, it's the best story. Um, it's about a young man named Alex. And Alex was an alcoholic. And he was a proud alcoholic. <laughs> and um, his family was pretty fed up with his alcoholism. And so his aunt called him one day and said, Alex, let's go get a Coke. And he said, sure, I'd love to go get a Coke. So she picked him up. He did not, she did not go get a Coke. She brought him to Faith City Mission and she dropped him and said, we're fed up. You can no longer be a part of this family till you get clean and sober. Well, Faith City has a program. And, and that program is to spend a year getting someone like Alex clean and sober. Uh, this program is free of charge at Faith City Mission. And, um, you know, we see graduates, we see transformation happen every day. Well, in this re regard, Alex was here. His aunt refused to let him get back in the car. And so he was stuck at Faith City Mission. Well, um, what we do is we take our, our candidate to uh, through some interviews and they'll just find their heart and what they want and this is what Alex told us I'm not staying and I, I'm on the men's team and I said okay that's fine but you're here now and he goes no I'm not staying I am not staying and I said well let me let me just ask you a few questions what's your drug of choice and he said vodka and I said okay how much vodka and he said about two gallons a day and I said that's not medically possible Alex that you'll That'll kill you. And he said, oh, you can build up to it. And I'm thinking in my head, that is a full-time job, night and day, to be able to consume two gallons of water, let alone two gallons of vodka. And how he is living to tell this, I don't know. Um, and I said, okay, <laughs> okay, well, tell me, um, do you have any ailments? Do you have any disabilities that would keep you from maybe doing chores here? And he said, I'm, I'm late stage cirrhosis of the liver. And he had the big, you know, the big belly that they have because their liver's so enlarged. And he said, and I'm jaundice, which was clear. He was the color of a carrot. And um, so I said, okay. Uh, he said, but I'm not staying. And I said, well, would you let me just pray for you? And he said, I'm not a religious man. And I said, that's okay. That's okay. 
So will you let me pray for you? He said, I'm not a religious man. And I said, okay. So will you let me pray for you? And he got, he rolled his eyes and he said, fine, just pray for me. Just get it over with. And uh, I'm, ch I'm chuckling inside because he's about to get it. And um, so I laid my hand on his liver and the team laid their hands elsewhere. And we just began to pray for healing for Alex. Let me tell you something about healing. Supernatural physical healing is the dinner bell for salvation because you can't refute it. You can't and your life is transformed forever. So when I laid my hand on his liver and began to pray God's word over him for healing, Blessed I, it is my wish that you prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. It's God's will to heal every time. And so as I laid my hand here and we're praying, all of a sudden his liver kicked me like a baby in the womb. And I went, did you feel that? He said, I did. His eyes big as saucers. I did, but I'm not a religious man. And I said, well, let me know how that turns out. And so, because he, his family wouldn't come pick him up, he was there at the mission. And it, on the 20th day of what he would call his incarceration, um, he actually had to go to Texas Tech Medical Center for his checkup on his liver. And so, he gave the blood work and did everything normally. And um, the intern came back in the examination room and said, Alex, your enzymes are testing normal, and we know that's not true. So I'm going to go get the doctor. And so uh, he went to get the doctor. Liver enzymes are testing normal. We know that's not true. What should we do? The doctor said, let's take a sonogram. So they prepped him to take the sonogram. The doctor's, you know, moving the mouse over uh, the area. And um, the doctor, and I'm quoting this, the doctor said, Alex, I've seen your liver. And all I can say is, you're a walking miracle because this liver is normal. And I've seen how big your liver is. And so Alex all of a sudden said, what? What? And he couldn't. It just wouldn't sink in. And he went, my God, I'm healed. I'm healed. He started weeping. He started crying. He ran down to the lobby, called his family to tell them that his liver was normal and that he'd just been healed. And, um, oh, they rejoiced and, and he rejoiced. And um, he came back to the mission and he said, I want to know all there is to know about that God that healed me. And so he what he became a heat seeking missile. He was so excited. You talk about transformation from the dark to the light overnight. Alex was a different man. Now, I want to tell you something about that. I, long ago, I'm, uh, several years ago, I met a woman who was a scientist, Dr. Iverna Tompkins, and her study, her research was in light light particles. And so she hypothesized this theory that there were light particles that actually emanate from the human form. They are microscopic, of course, but they emanate from the human form. And uh, there are certain uh, people that the, there's, they, they produce millions of light particles, and then there are certain people that don't produce very many at all. Now, you know, for those that produce millions, and you've, you've run into this before, where you see the glowing bride or you see the radiant pregnant woman, or you see uh, the young man who's in love for the first time. And they are producing millions of biophotons is what they're called, these light particles. And, and so they're glowing, we see that. And we can see it with the physical eye. Whereas there are those who don't produce much. And um, what we've learned about them is these people are angry, they're frustrated, they're depressed, they're bitter. They're lonely, everything. So everything negative, she noticed on the spectrometer, they don't produce very many light particles. They're, they're dark. And we've even seen, you've seen that dark countenance. You've seen that sinister countenance where, you know, you, you're kind of iffy about this person because their countenance is so dark. And, and I've seen some, I've seen those that are deep into some serious practice, secret sin and their countenance just gets darker and darker and darker and then i've seen those that are filled with joy um and they're they just got saved or they whatever it is happy and they are just filled with light and their faces are literally glowing
And so here's Alex. He's been in the dark practicing this dark two, <laughs> two gallons a day habit. And he is transferred into the light. And now he is on fire for the Lord, he is so excited about what God did for him. He, You get within 50 feet of the guy, and he's going to tell you all about what God did for him. And so I've seen this transformation before, but here's a really great story. One day, Alex gets a call. He's a brand new Christian. He, hadn't, he really still hadn't been there long. But he gets a call from the family that his brother-in-law, Bill, is in an alcoholic poisoning coma in the hospital and um, again late stage cirrhosis of the liver jaundiced and in this coma and I love new believers because Alex said well that's no problem if God healed me he'll heal my brother-in-law so he gathered up 11 other recovering addicts brand new in the program they're all green I, I they and they are all on fire and so Alex said, let's go and pray for my brother-in-law and God, God will heal him. And so they did. They, they all got in the car and they went to the hospital and they went to his room. They gathered all the way around the bed and they each laid their hands, their brand new baby Christian hands, on this man in a coma. And they began praying healing over him. I'd give anything to have been there to see it. But they began to pray healing over him. Now, Bill all of a sudden, miraculously wakes up out of a coma. And he sits up and he says, well, hey, what are y'all doing here? And Alice said, we came here to pray for you that you be healed. And Bill is still a little fuzzy and he goes, okay, okay. And um, so they continued to pray for him. And then they began to, they said, we need to lead you to the Lord. You need the Lord. And so I don't even know how they knew to do that, but they they prayed that Bill get he, that he get saved, and, and he got saved that day, gloriously saved. They're rejoicing. The nurses are wondering what the heck's going on in room two hundred four. But at any rate, um, as they talked to him, gathered around the bed, one of the one of the guys said, "Look at his nose," and he had a out of this carrot colored skin, he had a pink nose, a pink dot on his nose, and as they watched before their very eyes. That dot got bigger and bigger and bigger and covered his face. And then his arms turned pink and his legs turned pink and he turned pink. And he was sober as a judge. And um, he, three days later, he's out of the hospital. Incredible story of transformation with these baby Christians. And they're just so on fire and full of faith that they see their brother-in-law completely healed and on fire and transformed. And so it makes me think about um, Moses. So when Moses went before the burning bush, he was frightened, scared, hiding, in hiding, um, behind the backside of a mountain. And um, in a moment, in a moment, he's transferred from that to a fire-breathing dragon about leading all the people of Israel out of Egypt. Enough bravery to walk before a Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And so it's the same. And, and Bill became that person. Well, um, eventually there was, there was another story attached to this story. And that is there was a man who was homeless on the street and named Domingo. And he um, came to the mission, uh, Faith City Mission, and he asked the receptionist, I've heard someone here got healed of cirrhosis of the liver. Is that true? Now, this is all in Spanish, but yes, that's true. We There has been. And he said, well, I want them to pray for me because I have cirrhosis of the liver and I'm jaundiced and I, I need prayer. And they said, fine, no problem. All you need to do is tomorrow morning at 8.30, staff and student chapel right here at the mission, and they will lay hands on you and pray for you. And he said, okay. And so he said, what was that time? And he said, 8.30. And so sure enough, as we start to gather to get into the chapel, Domingo's already sitting in there waiting for us. He is so <laughs> ready to be healed. And um, so I'm at the front. 
and I'm told about the story that Domingo uh, speaks no English, but he needs he wants to be healed. So they lead him forward. I grab Alex um, with a track record now, and so I, I ask Domingo, "Como esta?" My, my Spanish is horrible, but after eight years, you'd think I'd knew more than "Como estás, dead." Como estás, dead? Um, muy malo. Por qué? Por qué? And he did this like this and um, then he pointed to his belly and um, I said okay let us pray for you so Alex and I laid our hands both of our hands on his liver and we began to pray God's healing word that God sent his word to heal Domingo and save him from his destruction and as we prayed suddenly his liver not only kicked us but it flopped like a fish so it just kept wiggling around like this like this Honestly, really, like a fish under the skin. It was doing that. I said, Domingo, I'm pretty sure you're healed, buddy, because this is really not medically possible. But we just kept doing it. We prayed for probably 10 minutes, and it flipped and flopped. It finally stopped, and I just said, I'm pretty sure you're healed. So, Domingo, come back and tell us when when you're healed, okay? And so um, the next week, it was actually my turn to speak in Noon Chapel for the guests off the street. And I'm telling them this crazy story about Alex and, and then um, Bill and all these crazy things that have come to pass where these people are just being transformed like dominoes falling. And um, Bill, my uh, head of security, walked toward the back of the room and he's standing in the aisle and he, he interrupted me and he said, you don't even recognize him, do you? And I said, what? I'm sorry, what? And he said, it's Domingo. And I said, what? And I walk back there and there's Domingo. That dark face was gone. He was radiant and he had no belly anymore and he wasn't yellow anymore. He was healed. What an incredible story. Again, healing is the dinner bell to healing. Is that, I mean, to a salvation. Healing is the dinner bell to salvation. And so th these three stories tell us so much about what God will do when he's transforming a human being. And how when the, when the students come in to the program, uh, we, we, this is a scientific fact, uh, but what happens when they get into the program and they detox, that's the hard part is detoxing. But in the next six weeks, they uh, they actually go into what we call the honeymoon stage of recovery. Now what's actually happening is that their endorphin levels are going off the roof. The, the brain is producing massive amounts of serotonin and endorphins in order to heal itself of the damage done by the alcohol or the drugs. And so what happens is that raises your sense of well-being to such a degree that you're putting off billions of biophotons and you're so happy and zippity doo dah and, and life is great and they feel so much better for the first time in so long and so their faces are just glowing it's it's wonderful to see but uh and then their lives are changed and they're they're they feel like they've been resurrected from the dead. And they'll tell you that because uh, just today we had a testimony about a man that he was so sick because of the meth that he was having psychotic thoughts. He was having psychotic visions and seeing things that weren't there. I mean, he had destroyed his body. And he came in to the mission to get clean and sober and he, that's what his brain started to manufacture serotonin and make him feel better and he was able to buckle down and get to work on his program and what a transformation that man is now the head of our security he is completely changed as a human being he was uh, five years into his illness and he was homeless and he had nothing to live for. He weighed, he, he looked like a skeleton. He weighed so little. And yet God changed him. In a nanosecond, God changed him. And what happened was, it was I, it's noon chapel again and I'm preaching. And in the middle of my sermon, the Lord whispers in my ear and says, um, that gentleman right there, that second row, there's a gentleman that uh, is going to preach the gospel. And so I said, the Lord just told me that in this vicinity right here, one of you is going to actually preach the gospel. Now, for the eyes to see, that's not... <laughs> 
possible. It's just not. I mean, they're just doing good not to throw up in chapel, right? And um, so here, and I said, one of you, and a lady leaned forward and tapped this guy on the back and said, "He's talk. she's talking about you, Bill. She's talking about you. And he said, there's no way. I would never do that. Well, that was the one that gave his testimony today about what God had done. And he preaches frequently in the chapel today. Transformation completely changed. I love my job because I get to see the most extraordinary things happen in the least and the most likely who have destroyed their lives with alcohol and drugs. And here they are now preaching the gospel and bringing others to salvation. Oh my gosh. I have another story to tell you. I love this story because it really kind of messes with your theology. But at any rate, um, so I'm preaching again in guest chapel. And um, I said, now I know if any of you want healing, I, I'll pray for you for healing. And um, on the front row, there was a woman seated and she was very drunk, very, very, very drunk. But we we hope we can get some food down her, you know, and she might live through the night. But at any rate, she uh, is shriveled up and she's jaundiced. And I assume she had hep C. That that ha we see that a lot. And um, and so she she's sitting there, and I tell this, you know, I preach a sermon, and if you need prayer, you come up, and I'll pray for you. And so this woman came up. She made a beeline for me, and she came up, and uh, she was crying, and she said, I just need your help. I need your help. I said, what's wrong? And she said, well, I have hep C. I've had it for 15 years. And she said, uh, I just went to my doctor, and he tells me that I'm literally at the end of the end. And uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, you know, I'm so far gone that he's, I'm on interferon. And uh, I, I, thought, I, don't, I don't know. My sister's an RN, so I called her later and said, is this really what they do? She goes, yeah, if they put her mom interfere on there at the end of the end, there's really no, there's no hope left. And so uh, I said, she's crying, what's to be done? And I said, well, all I know to do, Wanda, is pray for you. And so I laid my hands on her and just began to pray God's healing touch on Wanda because your word never comes back void but it always accomplishes what you send it to do. And so even as the rain comes down and waters the earth and the plants grow, your work comes down and heals. And so um, I just prayed that and off she went to lunch. And um, the next Monday morning at eight o'clock, I am coming to my office and across the hall from my office door is Wanda. And I said, Wanda, she was pink, she was plump, and she was sober as a judge. Well, there's a miracle right there. And I said, Wanda, you look like you've been to the spa Are you, this weekend. Are, what happened? And she said, big eyes, saucers. She said, I went to see my doctor. And I said, okay, well, what'd your doctor say? And she said, he said, Wanda, I don't know what happened and I don't know how you did it but you, you do not have hep C anymore. You are healed. And she was so excited. I was so excited. I jumped up and down. I hugged her. We're crying and we're hugging. And, and she pulled back from me and she said, do you know what this means? And I said, no, honey, what does it mean? And she said, it means God loves me. I said, yes, he does, because you were drunk when he healed you, which I love that story. That's the redemptive nature of our God, that even this little one has abused her body to the point of the brink of death, and yet he pulled her from the flames, and he changed her and dropped into her life. Not only did he heal her, but he dropped into her heart his love for her that was palpable, that was real, that he, she could touch and feel because of what he did for her. What an amazing story. What an amazing story to see God's touch. So many people, you know, people ask us a lot. Um, people come and volunteer and they're from other churches and they hear about the healings that happen. Um, at Faith City Mission, and, they, and they've said these words to me. Why is it that you see so many more healings than we do at church? And I said, 
I think because this people group, actually the least and the littlest in the kingdom of God, the poorest of the poor, um, the derelict of the derelicts, the underside or the underbelly of society, everyone's thrown away, are desperate. And they have nothing left but God. There is nothing left for them except for God. And he says, I can work with that. I can work with that. And he changes those lives over and over and over again. I guess that's why I love my job so much because I get to see firsthand these little ones' lives transformed, completely redeemed, then going on to be uh, loved by the Lord and loving others in the Lord and leading normal lives with kids and husbands and a job. And, and it's just amazing to me to see the redemptive length that God will go to to heal anyone. You know, Faith City Mission has a, a calling on its life. I have a calling on my life for this people group. And I know a lot of people have a heart for those that are just a mess. They're derelict or they're completely, they've lost everything or they get beat up or whatever. And so um, if that is your heart, and if you would like to be a part of God's movement on this group of people, then I encourage you to just to make a donation to Faith City Mission. You can go on the website and do it online, or you can call the accounting office. Um, that number is 806-373. 6402. And so uh, 806 373 6402. You can call that or uh, just write a check. Um, and then in the memo that you uh, make, make this donation to Faith City Mission through You Need a Miracle, and then we'll, we'll be able to track that. And uh, you will be blessed because blessed is He who blesses the poor. Blessed is He who blesses the poor. And I've seen that happen all the time and so I encourage you to step out and just really be a part of rescuing the one of God's favorite people groups. Um, also if you want to read more stories about Faith City Mission and Walmart and the gas station and on the side of the road, um, the, there are 101 stories in this book about the miracles we've seen. The name of the book is Signs and Wonders 101. You can order it off of Amazon com or you can order it off of signs and wonders 101.com and I'll ship that right to you I think you'll be so blessed you'll just be mesmerized by the things that God has done with uh, with the people on his that he loves and so I hope that that encourages you and builds your faith to believe for what you need a miracle for amen God bless you